Thank you, Julia, for the introduction. It's very nice to be here. And well, also thanks to, to our team and also all the team members who are in Mexico. Jose is leading a, a very talented group of designers and architects, and Gabriela works with also very talented uh, young people in the city government, and I have very bright uh, graduate and undergrad students in the computer science department. So uh, you might have the feeling that Mexico City is a big city, but how big is Mexico City? Just to give you a comparison with Ingolstadt, um, <laughs> <laughs> well, by area, it's about 10 times the, the square kilometers. Uh, by population, it's something like 160 times the population, and we have something like 100 times more vehicles than Ingolstadt. But, uh, I mean, perhaps you, it's difficult to imagine what does it feel to live in a city of 20 million people. So this is more or less what it is to live in such a city. Where at rush hour, it's so packed that people have to use the windows to get into the trains. I'm not sure you get this kind of behavior in Ingolstadt. I don't know, maybe in, at the concert. And another characteristic, which is peculiar of Mexico, is the amount of demonstration and pickets we have every year, which amount to almost uh, more than 20 every day. And this is very disruptive for mobility. And also, if we focus only on, on cars, uh, IBM in 2011 uh, gave us the not so honorable distinction of the most painful commute in the world. And I mean, we have never won the World Cup, but at least we have this. And to, to give you another comparison with Ingolstadt, if each little dot represents 1,000 cars in Ingolstadt, you have 90,000 cars more or less. In Mexico, we have 9 million. So it's a new level of uh, a new dimension of the problem we are, we're having here. So the next time you are stuck in the traffic here in Ingolstadt, you can relax and say, oh, the Mexicans have 100 times worse traffic than we have. <laughs> and uh, we focus on the new business district of Santa Fe to the west of the city. This is up in the hills, so it limits the mobility. It's difficult to build public transport there, so it's basically buses and cars going there. And uh, th there are lots of limitations. And comparing it with the Audi factory here in Ingolstadt. Uh, here there are something like 35,000 workers, which is more or less the population of, of this district uh, of Santa Fe. Uh, however, imagine that every day you would get uh, all of the population of Ingolstadt coming into the factory. And then again, the whole population, because uh, every day, 260,000 people go into Santa Fe, which is twice the population of Ingolstadt. So you can start to get a feeling of what's the magnitude of the problem just here in, in this business district of Santa Fe, where many people go to work and also to study. And of course, I'm a computer engineer, so if you ask me how to solve this problem, I'll tell well, with big data. That's very popular nowadays, and you can solve anything with it. The problem with Mexico City is that we don't have big data. I mean, the, you cannot imagine, because the city government doesn't even have a clear idea of how many bus routes there are. So uh, we really have a problem where we cannot start seeing the solutions. However, we can ask, what if uh, the mobility, the commuters who are believed to cause the problem of mobility can be part of the solution? So. We're introducing a concept of a data donor, just like you would give blood to the benefit of others. What if people give away their, their data to benefit mobility? And of course, you could say, well, but what about privacy concerns? Well, if you're commuting six hours a day, and I tell you, give me your data, and I will improve mobility, you will give me not only your data, you will give me all your passwords. So what we're trying to do to gather this data is instead of having a centralized uh, approach, 
because we just don't have the infrastructure for gathering big data of the city like many uh, cities in developed countries have. We're trying to collect from different sources in a self-organizing way uh, all this data, to make it open. And what do I mean by self-organizing? Let me try to, to uh, use a metaphor. So uh, I will raise my hands, and when I raise my hands, you will also raise your hands, and when I bring them down, you will also bring them down. Ready? One, two, three. Up and down. Up and down. One more. Up and down. So you're very well synchronized. I'm Big Brother Google, and I tell you which data I want from you, and I will also decide which data I give to you. Which, of course, is better than no data, but that limits innovation. And it also limits to, to a single entity who's controlling the data. Now, I'll ask you to close your eyes, don't cheat, and don't be afraid. <laughs> uh, don't touch your neighbor. And whenever you want, just raise your hands and bring them down whenever you want. And maybe later we'll see how chaotic this is in the, in the recording. So that's more or less like Mexico City. Well, everybody's doing their own thing, and there's no coordination at all. Now, let's try to do, uh, like in the stadium, uh, a wave. Uh, I think you call here la, la Ola. Yeah? So we can start here. And you just raise your hands and this way. One, two, three. Oh, that's very good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is self organized in the sense that I just uh, made a little push and then everybody coordinated with their neighbors. There's no central control because everybody just follows the rules of their neighbors. So in a similar way, we can uh, give the freedom of people to use public available data and to share the data, and like that we can promote coordination and innovation. So if uh, people uh, moving through the city, not, not only through cars, but in public transportation, in bikes and walking, start leaving digital traces, then we can go behind them picking up their, those digital traces and then making them av available for uh, innovators to make applications that we can't even Im imagine, which is uh, difficult to, to think in a closed environment where only a small group of people have all the data. And in the 1980s, Time Magazine uh, called uh, Mexico City as having a curse because of so many population. However, this curse could be turned into a blessing because having so many people uh, gives you the possibility of gather much more data and like that, uh, get a better understanding of mobility. So if we gather all this data from a distributed way and have it open, we'll have a better understanding and people will have uh, the ability to make better decisions, not only citizens, but also corporations, organizations, uh, scientists, and finally also the government. Because uh, nowadays uh, the, the urban planning is made with a poll which is seven years old made only to the 0.2% of the population. So it's difficult to, to make good decisions with uh, limited information. I'll just show you a couple of examples of the things we, we are already doing. We're gathering two different types of uh, data. One is structured data with meaning, which is basically uh, travel information. So one of the private universities in Santa Fe uh, made a poll of all, all these employers and where, where they live and which uh, transportation mode they used to, to reach Santa Fe. So we are starting to get this data from other companies and uh, universities in the, in the area. And if we aggregate, we'll get a better picture than each of them uh, has isolated. And we can start to, to uh, explore new solutions. And an alternative way of getting this mobility information is from unstructured data, for example, with geolocalized tweets. We, if we get the tweets which were tweeted in Santa Fe, and then we follow the users and see where else they're tweeting, then we are getting an insight on their mobility patterns. So like this, we can infer in a cheap way, in a very fast way, uh, mobility patterns of people without having to ask them, and basically for free. And if this solution uh, can be applied in Mexico City, it's more suitable to export to other megacities in developing countries rather than whole integrated solutions 
which are very expensive, which are stiff and difficult to localize to other uh, cultures. And for Audi, what does this mean? It means that if you start developing your own technology and do not open to other technologies from uh, the, the whole economic ecosystem, it's very difficult to integrate different products. But if you uh, participate in a mobility uh, initiative like the one we're proposing, then with open uh, data, you're able to develop applications and partners are able to develop applications giving a better mobility experience for uh, the Audi users. So if we want to improve uh, mobility in cities in order to make cities more livable, we want to make uh, mobility to be more like a living system. So let's build living mobilities.